Jamie Lucas for Civic Center TV. Coming up in November, West Bloomfield will get a visit from one of its former residents when his art is on display at the Barnes & Noble right off of Orchard Lake. And joining me today is the artist himself, Monty Nagler. Monty, thank you so much for having us in your home. Well, it's my pleasure having you all over. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So tell me, what is going to be happening at this Barnes & Noble? You're going to be displaying your art? This is my annual exhibit on my photographs there. It's been about 15 years, I believe, Emmy, since I've done it there, always the same time of year. It is my largest show of the year. There'll be 75 to 80 frame photographs, uh, plus calendars, books, other things that I've had published too. And it's probably my most enjoyable exhibit of the year because I love hanging out at Barnes & Noble. And I'm there daily uh, for the 10 days of the show uh, from two in the afternoon till nine in the evening, even weekends included too. And people can come and visit with you? They can come and visit with me. I'm there to uh, talk about the photography or help them out with their photographs, which happens often too. And uh, it's just a lot of fun being there. I really enjoy it. Now, what, what type of pieces will you be bringing? Do you bring different stuff every year? Um, it's quite a variety of photography that I, I like to do. Everything from people shots to some animal shots, mostly landscape and nature is really what I like to do some of the new concepts or new ideas I've had in photography like the geometric series uh, will be shown for the first time. What I'm calling the new montage series will be shown for the first time. So I'm always trying to come up and create new imagery to kind of make the show e exciting and, and different from years past. Now what is the geometric series? Um, they're all black and white. They're pictures I'm doing in a square format and I'm creating very unique borders that complement the picture, the borders of which are printed out when I print out the imagery itself. So they are, they are different. And I don't know if anybody in photography is doing anything quite like this. So. Now, when did you start having your art progress from just a simple still photograph into being more creative, creating the geometric series? I would say since I went into digital, and digital has been about six or seven years ago. And uh, you know, I, I really fought it for a long time. I was a dedicated film guy, but then yeah, I had to get with the time, so I switched into digital, and I love shooting digital. I should have done it years ago. So it's really since I've been going digital that I've been able to come up with these creative ideas and actually put them on paper. It would take them from my mind and actually you can visually see them. How does that help your creative process? Because it seems like you're continuing to grow as an artist and a photographer by being able to include, you know, After Effects or Photoshop. Yeah, I think, I think all artists need to, uh, to grow and to learn more and to do more and uh, just create different ways of expressing yourself, uh, my you know, feelings about nature and, and what I see through the camera, just to sh share with other people and uh, try to get them to appreciate you know, the, the world a, a little bit more. And if I can do that through my photographs, uh, it's a very satisfying feeling for me. When did this start? When did you become a photographer and how do you become a photographer? <laughs> easier said than done. With me, uh, believe it or not, it was, uh, I never took my first meaningful photograph till I was 30 years old. And if somebody told me in my 20s I'd be a photographer one day, I would have just laughed at them. The only thing I ever photographed then, back then was my kids at their birthday parties. But I stumbled on a photography at age 30 almost by accident one day and I just went, wow, this is, this is fun. And it started as an avid hobby. I mean, I went into it in a big way, real fast, right from the get-go. I think within 30 days, I even had a dark room in my house, printing pictures. I got, got right into the camera clubs, uh, c contests. Uh, I mean, I just, this was just, wow. I mean, after all these years of kind of feeling frustrated, like I wanted to, uh, to create, do some creativity in, in a way that never came to me. When I stumbled on a photography, I said, wow, this is it. This is finally it. I've, this is what I've been waiting to do all these years. Where did you stumble onto photography? Where was this? Well, what happened? I went to Hawaii for the first time. 
it was 1970, and all I had back then was an Instamatic type camera, just kind of a no-brainer camera. And I remember for the first time taking landscape photographs, you know, other than kids at birthday parties. And I remember the excitement, like, this is really fun to compose pictures like that and so forth. And what happened when I came back after the trip, there was something wrong with the camera. And I didn't know it at the time, and none of the pictures came out. So it's like the bad news, good news. The bad news was that none of the pictures came out. The good news was that I remembered the excitement that I felt when I was doing this, that it was really fun. So I went out and I got a just an inexpensive but a better camera and just started to take photographs and friends and family were going ooh and ah, you know, these are pretty good, you got a pretty decent eye and, and that, that's kind of where it all started. What so. is it? People do, they say people have an eye for it. What, what is I that? Think the eye, it, it's, it's a great question. It's a little hard to define, but it's really what I call vision. You know, it's, it's shifting from just documenting something to making a statement about it. It's switching, and, th and I teach this in my class, it's switching from just taking a snapshot to making a photograph. It's being able to see through your, what I call your inner vision, kind of your, your, your feelings. And it's getting the attitude that it's not the camera that takes the picture, it's really you, you know. So. Now, you mentioned you teach this in your workshop, so you're not only a photographer, but you're also a teacher. I've, when did that I've start? Taught, I have taught for, I started teaching photography classes when I still had the muffler shops. <laughs> Way back in 1979, I started teaching classes. And, uh, and I realized when I started doing it, yeah, th this is really fun. I mean, being able to share my knowledge with other people and get them excited about their own pictures. I mean, it's, it's a great feeling for me. I've, I've always liked sharing, and this is a, a, a great way to do it. Now, you said muffler shops. I think we need to back up a little bit. Further okay. than well, 1979, when did you okay. acquire well, we muffler go, we shops? We can go way, way back to when <laughs> I graduated from University of Michigan. In fact, Ann Arbor is my hometown. Grew up there. Went to U of M, and I have an engineering degree and an MBA degree. I worked at Ford Motor Company all through my 20s in the product planning office. So that was kind of a creative outlet there. Um, we worked about four or five years in advance on cars. We worked on concept cars. Uh, I remember working with Carol Shelby, you know, did the Mustang, mm -hmm. yeah. George Barris, I knew he did the, all the Hollywood dream cars, and it was really a neat job. It was all secret, I couldn't talk about what I did, because we worked so many years in advance, and for a kid right out of college, working on cars like that, it was, it was, uh, it was quite exciting. Um, I did very well there, I got tired of the politics that are so prevalent in the auto industry. And when I was 29 years old, I quit. That was a big decision to quit Ford because, you know, they, um, I had free cars and free insurance and they make it hard to leave. Uh, but nevertheless, I did it and I went into the Midas muffler business of all things, from cars of the future to cars of the past. And I opened up two Midas shops in 1970, which was the same year, you know, I went to Hawaii and, and stumbled onto the photography. And so, how did having those businesses help your photography well, career? Well, I think having my own business, you know, being the boss, you know, gave me the means and the opportunity to pursue photography. I could just you know, take off when I wanted, go on a trip. Uh, you know, so it just gave me the freedom to, to, to do that. Now, that was a huge leap of faith that you took by quitting Ford and opening up these other businesses, but it seemed like probably an even bigger leap of faith when you decided to put the muffler business behind you. What was that like? That was even, that was even a bigger risk. Well, I've always believed you have to take risk in life. You have to take chance. And, uh, and I, those were two gutsy moves. One was leaving Ford and the other, the bigger one was even, you know, leaving the muffler shops. So I was 42 years old at the time and decided to sell a, a pretty decent business and take a chance on seeing if I can make a living selling black and white pictures. I mean, that, and I was 42 years old at the time. I mean, it was, a, it was a risky move. And when I sold the shops and made that career change, I was picking the hardest area in photography to make a living in the arts. 
So I've never done a wedding. I've never owned a portrait studio. I was leaping right into fine art photography at that age, and it was a gutsy move. But I, I figured, you know, better to try and fail at something than never even make a try. And, and as I said earlier, you've, you have to take risk in life. And to this day is my way of giving back to the community. I go to schools often and talk to kids, and I tell them to follow your dreams and follow your passions and take risk in life and do, do what you love doing. You know, other than your family, your job is probably the most important thing in your life. And why go through life in a job that you don't like, like so many of my friends have? when you can go through life and be passionate about what you do and have and have fun doing it. I mean, it's so important. I feel so fortunate that you know, I have a life work that I just, I love doing so much. What photography and what photographs have you taken that have meant a lot to you traveling? Oh boy, <laughs> I'll tell you there's, I mean, er, every image I take has meaning to me. I mean, it gets me excited inside, or I wouldn't take the image to start with if it didn't turn me on. But I think I have certain certain of my pictures, and there'll be a lot of those at Barnes & Noble that that have a, a, a great deal of meaning to me. I just think they're strong pictures or maybe the memories of making that image, you know, stand out in my mind, the, mind, the excitement I felt when I took it. Uh, I can go back 20, 30 years, and I remember every picture I took, where I was standing, what I was thinking. You know, it's um, it's exciting <laughs> and fun. But yeah, you know, there I'll be mean, certain of my pictures. Uh, I kind of maybe treasure uh, above other ones. So. Now, where have you been to take all these photographs? I've been to a lot of places. You know, fortunate to travel a lot. And. You know, it's interesting, of all the places I've traveled, I think the best country is right here in the U.S. And I think one of the best states, and I've been to many, many states, is right here in Michigan. It's beautiful here. Do you find that you have a lot of, I don't want to say commission, that's not really the right word, but a lot of um, demand for photographs from Michigan, from maybe some of your, you know, There are a lot clients? of the clients want Michigan pictures. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the city of Detroit, a lot of c uh, c companies down there want images from the city. Uh, so, you know, there, there is a demand for, you know, d d Detroit and Michigan pictures. Um, and then there are some people, some companies, they just want uh, just a beautiful landscape. Uh, so it, it, it all differs. And some of these companies are the hospitals, and you are very heavily involved in providing yeah. photography and art yeah. for a lot of hospitals. Explain that to about, me. About 12 years ago, my wife, Mickey, came to work with me. And today, to this day, we, the two of us run the business. Um, the biggest division of the business, and she runs that mostly, is called Photos for Healing. And there's a website dedicated just to that. It's called photosforhealing.com, and that's the healthcare division, where we are selling pictures to hospitals all over the country. Um, the main purpose of which is to relax patients, help them get through a procedure. Uh, it's a calming effect, uh, not just for patients, but for visitors, uh, family, and even the hospital staff. And what's unusual is that they are very often very large pictures. They're displayed in a different way. Uh, they could be wall murals. Uh, we have one right here in Detroit at Henry Ford main campus on Grand Boulevard. Um, the picture is 89 feet long, believe it or not, it's that big. Um, we have one up in Sparrow Hospital that I think is about 25 feet. There's one out in Novi Providence Park. It's a triptych of a Michigan waterfall, meaning three pieces that's 30 feet wide. Um, we've done some big installations. We'll also put them in the ceiling. Now these are often on an acrylic that are backlit. And they'll go right over a CAT scan. Uh, somebody's getting an M M M MRI treatment. Uh, you know, they're looking up at a picture. We've put them over linear accelerators. A linear accelerator is when people have to get, unfortunately, get radi radiation treatments, and which is very unsettling. So if they can lay back and get the treatment, but they're looking up at a 
very pleasing garden scene, colorful garden scene. It's been proven, documented, that it can help relax them. It gets them through the procedure a little bit easier. And I get a very satisfying feeling knowing that my photography uh, can help a patient get through a procedure. I mean, it's really a very great feeling that I get. Let's talk about that satisfaction. You have been able to successfully foster a love for an art into a blooming business that's lasted um, decades. You've been a teacher. You are a published author. If you had to pinpoint, I would say, your biggest accomplishment, what would it be? I would say it'd have to be the, the health care. Um, you know, just help, helping patients get through I would say two things. One is the helping the patients get through a procedure you know, to relax them, and secondly, I mean, get, just getting away from the healthcare for a minute. And I mentioned this earlier. If I can get people through my photographs to see what really a beautiful world we live in, and get them to slow down a little bit, and the old expression "smell the roses," you know, if I can get them to do that through my photographs, that's a very satisfying feeling for me. And, and I might mention another thing I, I do is that I, I work with children from time to time and teach them to photograph. I've taught inner city kids in Detroit, you know, I, as a volunteer to how, to how to photograph. And it's a program where they actually get a free camera. It's like disposable cameras. And they go out and photograph. Then I critique their pictures and select one. They're printed up and they go on exhibit. You know, and that to me, if take these inner city kids and get them excited about something like taking photographs, and you'll be amazed at how good some of their pictures are. Kids will see things that adults don't see, and to get them turned on to something like photography, I mean, that to me again is very satisfying. Does that inspire your own work? I th I think it does. Yeah, I think when I get, like, when I can teach these kids and get all excited about teaching them, or I can put a overhead picture over a LINAC machine and that patient getting radiation, it gets them through that procedure a little bit easier. Yeah, it gets me very satisfying and very excited. Now, what are you looking forward to most for this um, exhibit, we should say, coming up in November? Well, I would say showing the new work that I'm doing, you know, new from last year, and just reconnecting with a lot of the people that come to the show too, just, you know, uh, through photography, many of my very closest friends to this day I've met through teaching or through the exhibits and uh, I've always been a kind of a, a people person too and uh, so it's just, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun being there. Okay, so let's tell our viewers when exactly is the exhibit and what times will you be there again? The exhibit opens November the 14th and it runs through November 24th, so it's a 10-day exhibit. Uh, the exhibit is up there during the total hours that the store is open, which is 9 in the morning till 10 in the evening, uh, uh, six days. I think Sunday it's from 9 until 8. I am there every day from 2 in the afternoon until 9 in the evening, including the weekends too. So I'm, I'm there a lot, but it's fun hanging out there meeting people. And Civic Center TV will be there as well, and hopefully we can catch up. I and hope so. If anybody else is interested, like Monte said, it's in November, and you'll be able to see him from 2 to 9 o'clock every day of the exhibit. Thank you again so much for having us. Well, thanks for coming over. I appreciate it.